materials and photographs of those who were affected by COVID-19 and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania, Ms. Scanlon, and the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Davis, each will control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the measure under consideration. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. H.R. 4738 establishes a COVID-19 history program within the Library of Congress's American Folklife Center. March 11th of this year marked the second anniversary of the World Health Organization's official designation of COVID-19 as a pandemic. Since then, more than six million people worldwide have succumbed to the disease, almost a million in the United States alone, and hundreds of millions more have suffered from its debilitating effects. And experts agree that current statistics are likely undercounting the disease's actual toll. Indeed, the true scale of social and economic devastation caused by the virus may never be known. Although the virus continues to disrupt daily life in ways both seen and unseen, through American ingenuity and sheer force of will, several effective vaccines were developed in record time. These vaccines continue to be an important tool as the fight to eradicate the coronavirus goes on. As the country and world enter this next phase of the pandemic, it's important that we preserve the stories of those that lived through it. COVID-19 is not the first pandemic, and it will not be the last. Humanity has endured Black Death, cholera, influenza, HIV, and AIDS. The list goes on. And as devastating as these diseases can be, there are lessons to be found in each. Lessons of love and loss, of peace and strife, of failure and triumph. Tragically, Few knew this firsthand better than my colleague and the gentlewoman from Louisiana and sponsor of this bill who lost her husband, Luke, to the disease. We applaud her for bravely answering the call of public service at such a difficult time. And we hope that she and her family continue to heal and that his memory serves as an, as an inspiration to them in all that they do. Mr. Speaker, I urge my colleagues to support this legislation and I reserve the balance of my time. <laughs> 